Gauntlet debuted in 1985, but has been dormant ever since Seven Sorrows released in 2005. Now nearly a decade later, thanks to Arrowhead Studios, it's time to once again conquer dungeons for fame, glory, and riches. The plot is thin, but serves its purpose to give a small level of context to the endless butchering of countless foes. A young wizard named Morak summoned the gauntlet and was later trapped within its depths. He called upon the adventurers to help set him free by collecting three shards of immense power. Naturally, each shard is guarded by a powerful boss, and it's up to you to vanquish them. I am Merlin, scholar of the Crystal Tower and master of the arcane. Up to four players can team up online or locally and choose between four distinct classes. Only one of each class can be played at a time, ensuring that when a full group is together, it's as diverse as possible. The banter back and forth between the characters builds their relationships with each other, and by the time the journey is complete, you may be surprised by what you hear. That is so not cool. The four classic archetypes return from the original game. The warrior excels at dealing damage up close and is vulnerable when swarmed by enemies. The Valkyrie can block and throw her shield, but has a slightly weaker attack. The elf has an automatic bow, which transforms the game into a twin stick shooter. Lastly, the most complex class is the wizard. He has nine spells that are conjured by different button combos, each with widely varying effects. He's a hard character to master, but a terrifying force on the battlefield if used properly. Each class feels unique with their own strengths and weaknesses, and switching between them helps alleviate the sometimes stagnant routine of monster slaying. While adventuring solo isn't terrible, playing as a full party is considerably more fun. Gold isn't shared among the group, and a winner is calculated at the end of each floor based on performance, encouraging an uneasy alliance throughout. Entering a room full of monsters, traps, and gold can be hilarious, as adventurers ignore enemies and go straight for the precious treasure without hesitation. The acquired gold can then be spent on relics, each with varying abilities. Up to two can be equipped and used with potions found scattered throughout the dungeon. Powers range from increased attack speed to summoning a demonic gargoyle. In the later stages, relics can mean the difference between life and death. These look like warriors' graves. Champions of the dead, come and face me. Additionally, health restoring food is limited and can even be destroyed by fellow teammates if personal vendettas become too great. The food was shot to oh. pieces by the swift little elf. However, even on the normal difficulty setting, Gauntlet can be a challenging game, so putting pride aside and working with the group is necessary for success. Enemies have the potential to slay you in just a few hits, and lives are a precious commodity earned only by killing enough monsters to gain a skull token. Welcome back, Valkyrie. Summoning stones mark the bulk of enemy encounters, and if not dealt with efficiently, the party can quickly become overrun. It's a satisfying feeling working together to overcome insurmountable odds and laying waste to hundreds of enemies with careful coordination. Specifically, the warrior's whirlwind and elf's bomb produce beautiful carnage. Instead of gaining traditional levels, characters earn masteries. Killing 10,000 monsters grants a 10% damage bonus. Dying a certain amount of times reduces the amount of gold dropped upon each death. Obscure masteries include being killed by spikes to reduce the amount of damage they deal, or getting killed while frozen to reduce the spell's duration. It's an interesting system that forces a more thoughtful approach while adventuring, and also streamlines co-op to ensure that anyone can drop in or out without feeling underpowered. Yep, it's me! I'm back! The level designs are a mix of pre-made and procedurally generated environments. Some are more complex than others, tasking the group to push blocks, insert statues into the correct spot, or fill a lava pool to raise a bridge. It would have been nice to have more varied environments instead of the traditional lava and cave tropes, but the fast-paced nature of the game means you don't have much time to examine your surroundings. I saw interesting the eight-hour campaign is broken up into three unique acts, with four stages apiece, each laced with vicious traps and secret passages. Unfortunately, once the campaign is finished, there's not much incentive to revisit areas. Completing the game on harder difficulty settings unlocks unique armor, but aside from an aesthetic difference to each character, no additional stats or powers are rewarded. This is an accessible co-op dungeon crawler that's at its best with a group of friends. It may be on the shorter side, but while it lasts, it's an unpredictable and memorable experience. Hopefully this is only the first of many steps back into the perilous gauntlet. Right, let's show these cracks what magic we have.